It is my hope that this video and the departure of my Orangus Fasto Osa out of the collection will help somebody because beware and be aware. And I wasn't. That is why she gone. Thank you for clicking on this video. Short and sweet, but importante because I always go on and on about my low humidity averaging 30%. My setup for all my orchids as best as possible is to accommodate the lack of humidity. However, in June of 2023, I had the best, best month ever. And I was really missing my large vandas, which I lost. And well, they are nothing but a sweet memory. Now you would look at my fastuosa and say, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. You've lost an orchid. But I'm going to tell you that I loved June because I had an average of 70% humidity throughout the entire month. And that is unheard of. I was already contemplating if this continues, I'm going to have to up my averages when I speak to you about my conditions here. Maybe to 40, even 50%, it was that high. Some nights I had 85, 90%. <laughs> it was glorious. I felt as though I was back in Kenya. Even my mouse wouldn't fly over my desk surface because of the humidity. Usually it flies across the desk because of the warm, dry air coming into the grow space where my fastuosa lives. I kept having to wipe things down with a towel. Loved it. But my fastuosa didn't. Clearly. Por qué? Why? Well, I just mentioned that my setups for the orchids is to accommodate the low humidity so that roots can grow, etc. And this fastuosa is potted up in ceramis. Ceramis is highly water retentive and ceramis will hold on to water for a very long time. Perfect for climates that have a very low humidity, like mine. Until, of course, there are anomalies, <laughs> like June was. For the most part, my setup around the entire collection is in such a way to accommodate my dry climate. Fasto also like a lot of humidity. And Ceramis is perfect for providing humidity, creating a microclimate around the orchid in question, plus a small orchid top. It is airy, everything is perfect, everything adds up and works beautifully for the past couple of years anyway. So, with that being said, before you say more airflow, let me tell you that this fast also got 18 hours of airflow on the daily, especially during the summer months, of course. That terrace door opens the moment I come downstairs and it doesn't close until I'm finished working at my desk. 18 hours of airflow, but the air was loaded with humidity. The pot had a lot of humidity. The media couldn't dry out because it was also absorbing humidity, even though I didn't water or have water in the basin and nothing like that. I'm just going to remove the tag because I do not want to mislead that the nursery where I got this orchid from had anything to do with its demise. That is absolutely not the case. Radical conditions that I am in favor of. <laughs> no matter the end result, those are the reasons for the demise, not the nursery I got her from. Why am I so delighted about this? The cadence in my voice may make you think, well, she's not upset. Well, trust me, when the first four lower leaves fell off in my hand just by moving one, I knew Fastuosa was history. And by the time I'm filming now, I've had my days to mourn her. However, I am super happy to be able to share this with you in case you have an orchid that has collapsed out of the blue and you cannot explain why. Then the demise of Fastuosa was not for now. So beware and be aware of any climactic changes even in your controlled grow space. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I grow au natural. That means I am dependent on mother nature and whatever mother nature throws at my collection, I have to respond and react accordingly or things are gonna go wrong. I've had several examples of that in the past two years, but even though losing an orchid is always such a shame, especially one that has grown so well, I'm here to say that the fact I've got a channel and I can share what goes wrong when things change, I can warn you about them and help you avoid those same errors or at least clear up any doubts or concerns you may have had about your growing method and why did an orchid collapse. Well, 
then, you know, all this is worth it. And that's what I am happy about because even in a controlled space, there are dangers there. So if you shuffle an orchid and move it from where it usually lives because another one is in bloom or you need to change things around to accommodate more orchids, something like that, know that every little area, that orchid that you've moved now could be totally different to what it had before. So if you're watering your orchids and it's not drying out as quickly, suddenly this orchid may get root loss because it's further away from the fan or it stopped blooming for you. Why? Nothing's changed. And I say that with the inverted commas, nothing's changed. Oh, well, maybe it's not getting as much light as it did before because you've shuffled the orchid around. Now, in my case, growing au naturel without any kitten caboodle to help me out, things happen more quickly and more radically. So there's plenty of examples of those happenings here on my channel the last two years. A vault of information based on what can happen out of the blue, because this to me is out of the blue. In the middle of May, she was growing a new leaf. By the end of May, she was starting on her second new leaf. And then we fast forward to the end of June, first week of July, and I lost four leaves in succession. And boom, adios, fastuosa. But let me just say something. I looked at the stem of this orchid and I thought maybe she can recover. Maybe a plantlet will grow around the base. But no, she really is a goner because the leaf loss started at the base and it looked exactly the same way that the top leaf is looking now. So fastuosa is well and truly a sweet, sweet memory. However, I hope that this video will avoid anything similar happening to your collection or at least answer a question why something happened to an orchid of yours that had been doing superbly in your collection. Why did it just collapse like that? Or thirdly, avoid any orchid in your collection from experiencing the same thing as my fastuosa. Either way, her demise should serve a purpose and I hope that she has done that. And even if she hasn't done that, would you still give this video a like? Because somewhere along the line, maybe this video will come back to you when you look at your orchid and go, huh, what's going on here? You may want to revisit the video and see if you've made any adaptation and changes that you weren't expecting would cause your orchid to struggle. I would appreciate a like and if you have not subscribed to my channel, I would appreciate your vote of confidence because, like I said, our fresco growing is a beast of its own and there can be lots of learning lessons with regards to having to react and respond according to the conditions that Mother Nature provides, including the unkind ones when it gets far too cold. Once again, I just hope this video was helpful. Thank you so, so much for watching. I appreciate your support, your time. I wish you a fabulous day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.